Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Iggy's Toy Parade and Soldier Review. This is your host, Iggy. Thank you for getting Iggy with it. And for your new subscribers, I want to give you a nice shout out. Hey, hey, hey. And uh, thank you for joining the Iggy Army. Today, we're going to be talking about the Mark's Headquarters buildings. And our first one up for discussion or review, rather, is this one here. And this is the uh, two-story Mark's Headquarters. It features a snap-on fireplace, a cupola with a flag. And when it was first introduced, the flag was made of cut-out tin. It's got some dust on the top of it there. And it features these doors that go into the cavalry supply. And they, of course, open up like that. And then you snap on this porch piece. And this building was first introduced to the Marks play sets in 1962. And uh, they would use this on and off in the uh, subsequent years in the 60s uh, before finally discontinuing it. And uh, let's move along here. This is the blockhouse over the gate that was first introduced in 1959. And so the one in 1959 was somewhat of like a prototype. And instead of having Fort Apache up here, it said Fort Apache here, and it was heat stamped. And uh, the sample I have is looks like it's either white or yellow it's it's hard to tell but uh this is the 1959 uh sears catalog and it shows the blockhouse over the gate for the first time also it shows one of the original uh, headquarters buildings which preceded the 1962 version. Now, uh, whenever you see these in a catalog or pictured or online, or you never get to see what's inside of it. So let's do that. Let's take a look at what's inside. And you can see that it has um, uh, some detail. And it's got a lot of dust there. I had this uh, on a shelf in the kitchen, and looks like Iggy doesn't dust very much. The rifle there, and let's see if I can get you some better light, guys. This is not working. The light there, the light there, uh, the rifle there, if it was to scale, would be like an anti-tank rifle. It looks like it'd be like 10 feet long. They have a broom, a stool, a bench with a plate, a bucket. Uh, what appears to be a carpet beater next to powder horn. And then we have a lamp on a shelf with a coat hanging. And, and what appears to be like a haversack. And I'm guessing it's a water basin, but it looks like a British Brody helmet or what we call a Tommy helmet, if you can see that. But I think it's supposed to be a wash basin. Anyway, that's the interior of the blockhouse over the gate. Oh, by the way, this up here is a... Let's see if I can move the light so it's not... There. That's a Charles Schro Schroy Vogel. It's hard to say his name. It's a German name. I know Vogel means bird, but I don't know what Troy stands for. Um, this is a fictional attack on a frontier fort. Uh, indigenous peoples would not waste their manpower in fruitless assaults against fortified positions. They preferred to ambush, such as the Fetterman massacre, where a Fetterman was duped into chasing after a small uh, scouting party of uh, Native Americans, and then he ran into a huge force 
and they wiped him out. In fact, uh, two of the men that had gone with him were scouts, and they had the Henry rifle. And the uh, natives got the Native Americans got really pissed at those guys because they killed quite a number of Indians before they were overwhelmed. And they were so mad that they uh, even killed their dogs because uh, uh, two guys killed so many of them. Anyway, eventually all were uh, killed and Fetterman gets to be known in history as Fetterman the Fool, I guess. Anyway, uh, not a, a great moment for the U.S. Cavalry. Okay, so there's the blockhouse over the gate. Here's a detail that I never noticed as a kid, but you can see there the uh, ruts from the wagons going into the fort. I thought that's a nice touch. Okay, so next up is a blockhouse. And this blockhouse was used in um, later days of Fort Apache, uh, specifically the heritage play sets. And it would come without the blockhouses on the corners, but it came with this big one that they would have in the middle and no headquarters building. And uh, what's cool about it is it has a port here. To, that you can put a, a a cannon there, like a naval gun or something. And the door opens, but I trimmed my nails so I can't open it. And the cupola with a flag, the flag is metal. In this case, it looks like a 20 star flag. It's made of uh, tin. And then the interior is pretty basic. It just shows a couple of barrels in there on the floor. And there's a whole bunch of dust in there. Uh, Iggy plans to plant onions later. Maybe corn, since uh, corn and pumpkins are in season now. So I think they used that for uh, Fort Dearborn, and the, I know for a fact they used them in their Revolutionary War sets. I have a picture of that in this book, which I didn't say for you, because I'm I'm not the uh, brightest crayon in the box, so to speak. Anyway, I do have something here that uh, will be of great interest to you. And that is this building that I have behind the blockhouse. This is a 1951 Fort Apache headquarters building. And they used this exact building from 1951 through 1955. Then in 1956, someone finally closed the door. And so this is now closed. And they switched the fireplace from left side to the right side and they put a pipe uh, with a little top on it and st instead of having they might it might have been a cost saving measure so that they didn't have to make this four-sided chimney but it has a uh, pipe up here and uh, this is made of tin it's in very good condition it has details on the interior which I want to share with you. It's got a really cool fireplace. However, the uh, rifle hanging over the mantle, if it's to scale, it's probably an elephant gun or another anti-tank rifle. It's gigantic. It, it looks like it would be 10 or 12 feet long. And then it's sort of minimal details after that. But I do like the fireplace and the floor. I like that too. Okay, guys, that's all I have for you this time. Um, let's review it very quickly. The 1962 uh, two-story building. Uh, this came in several colors. They had it in dark chocolate and also in the um, Adobe Red is what I call it. But everyone, 
or patchy red. I'm not sure what you would call that color. Um, and then uh, the blockhouse. If you have one that says Fort Apache over here, then you have a 1959 original. Then we have the uh, first tin building headquarters that they made for their play sets. And uh, they used this, I think, for the very first uh, rodeo play set. I think they used the same building for that in uh, 1951, maybe 1952. And then, of course, I showed you the uh, blockhouse here. And there's my blood pressure meter. <laughs> I forgot to hide that. I'm sorry. Um, and, well, there's my old... This, this book here is part of this set over here. Okay. You guys, you stuck through it. You made it to the end. I appreciate you coming along and getting Iggy with it. Uh, hit the like bucket. Uh, hit the light bucket. Well, at least you're not kicking the bucket. Don't do that. To prevent doing that, make sure you check your blood pressure. Okay, guys, that's it for me this time. Happy trails, and I'll see you back at the ranch. By the way, this book here, um, Mark's Fort Apache, King of Playsets. I've showed you this before, but this book bears a repeat performance. It's excellent. I recommend you get this. It's got some great photographs. Oh, you know what, guys? I'm not done. I just remembered something. I was going to tell you about this. Um, and the whole reason that I wanted to do this video is because of this and this. These two items were paired together by Sears for their giant Fort Apache playset in 1964. And the neighbors, Mark and Neil, had this set. And I would go over there and play with the set with them. And then, uh, I don't know, after they had the set a couple months, Mark said to me, uh, Hey, Richie, do you want to, um, do you want to have this? And I said, I said, are you kidding me? Really? He said, yeah, I'm serious. I want to give it to you. And I said, oh, that's so awesome, Mark. Thank you. I almost cried because I love this thing so much. So then he's sitting uh, cross-legged on the floor in front of it, as I, am I on the other side of it, and he takes a hammer out from behind him and smashes it. And then he's laughing and he's smashing it like some maniacal crazy kid, like the kid in the omen or something. And uh, he said, okay, there you go. And I'm, I'm, I was dumbfounded. I couldn't even say anything. I was so uh, stricken with grief by what he had done. But anyway, that's that story. And um, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the giant playset because if you can get a hold of one of those, it's, to me, I think it's the best playset they ever came out with. And let me see if I can find... Here it is, giant... Okay, here it is. Now, the, what makes this set so awesome is it came with three teepees. They were either in tan, gray, or yellow, depending on what dyes or plastic colors um, Marks had available at the time. And it came with two wagons, a, a regular wagon, which is also shown over here, and a square top wagon. Came with three artillery pieces, and it came with these new figures which collectors like to call long-coated, the long-coat cavalry. They're really nice uh, figures, and they're new to the playset. I don't think Mark's introduced any new figures again for their Fort Apache until 1967 when they released um, 7th Cavalry figures. Let me see a quick, quickly if I can find any pictures of those for you. You know, I should have planned this better, but you know how Iggy is. Remember I was talking to you about how the uh, later uh, Fort Apaches came with a blockhouse? That, that's it right there. Uh, so there's no corner blockhouses. 
Oh, here's the uh, Seventh Calvary they introduced in 1967. So unlike the previous figures that were a mixture of uh, soldiers and pioneers, they the set came with these instead. I think they discontinued those later, though, and went back to the pioneers and the uh, soldiers that had flintlock pistols and rifles. Now, uh, retailers were always trying to get the edge on their competitors. So uh, Marx offered this set to, uh, well, they worked in coordination with Sears Catalog to create this giant play set. And why is there such a shadow on that? Okay, not great cinematography here. And uh, Montgomery Wards was no different than Sears. They wanted a, an exclusive set too. So they introduced a set with a brand new box. And what did I do with it? Here it is. They introduced a brand new box, which you see here. And they introduced the long coat cavalry. So they had a jump on. Oh, I see what's wrong. One of the lights turned. My knee is caught in it. Wire is all over the place. Okay, here's the long coat cavalry that they introduced. It's hard for me to tell how many figures were originally because uh, in the Sears catalog. Or in this uh, in this book, they feature six of them. Uh, here they show eight, and I read that they featured nine, so I'm not sure. But uh, I'll just tell you what information I was either shown or read. Uh, also, a figure that's really cool that uh, Marx introduced. At this time, I'm gonna. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. Is the falling horse and rider, and uh, it was done in a cream color. Now I have several repros of these. I actually have a gray one and a powder blue one. I think they're pretty cool. And for some reason, I thought that I got that with my Civil War set in for Christmas. In 1961. So I looked at the uh, Sears catalog and there's no sign of a uh, falling horse and rider in 1961. So there you go, folks, an example of the Mandela effect. Okay, guys, that's it for me. Thank you for getting Iggy with it. Thank you for joining the Iggy Army. I want to, um, I don't know if I did earlier, but I want to give another shout out to all my friends across the world who are now watching the videos. And, uh, well, you know, I should give you a proper shout out. Hey, Mr. Man, whoa. There's someone in Thailand going, what is that? That was a poor imitation of Jerry Lewis. Only people in France like Jerry Lewis now. So I apologize for that. Um, thanks for getting Iggy with it. Thank you for joining the Iggy Army. Happy trails to you guys. Take care of each other. And I'll see you back at the ranch.